Well, the Bible's open to Luke chapter 24, beginning of verse 28. We're talking about this story about the disciples who are on the way to Emmaus. Um, it's just after the resurrection. In fact, they didn't even realize Jesus had resurrected. They were in Jerusalem, and they're walking seven miles, seven miles to a place called, the, to, to down this road that um, is everybody's knowledgeable of. And on this road, they are making their way to a, just a small town, and on that way, they find none other than Jesus. They don't even recognize him. And they begin talking with him about this road to Emmaus, and about also they talk with him about the crucifixion. And they're like, don't you know what went on? And Jesus begins telling with them, telling them about all the scriptures, about the suffering of the Christ. And we pick up the scripture in verse 28, and here's what it says. And he approached the village where they were going, to Emmaus, and he acted as though he were going farther. That's Jesus. But they urged him, saying, Stay with us, for it is getting, it is getting toward evening, and the day is nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. And when he reclined at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed it, and breaking it, he began giving it to them to eat. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to one another, were not our hearts burning within us while he was speaking to us on the road, while he was explaining the scriptures to us? And they got up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found gathered together the eleven and those who were with them. And here's what those eleven were saying. The Lord has really risen and has appeared to Simon, speaking of Peter. They began to relate their experiences on the road and how he, Jesus, was recognized by them in the breaking of the bread. Tonight, I want to talk with you about this message, There's More to See. And then listen, you probably have actually heard the statement that says, there's more to see than that meets the eye. I guess what I want you to see on the screen is a picture of Jesus. Many of you maybe have seen this picture before of Jesus, and it's a very interesting shot of Jesus. Now, if you look at the picture, you actually see a head shot of Jesus, but there's more to see than meets the eye. In fact, you're really wondering, what's there in that picture? Well, if you look really closely, you'll find out there are actually 11 other images related to the crucifixion and the life of Jesus, all carved into the face of Jesus. Some of you have probably seen that before. Maybe you're actually familiar with these things called stereograms. Stereograms were the things that were real popular back in the 80s. They were set up in, um, in, in um, I guess I would say, in malls all over America, and people would go to these stereograms, and they just saw a bunch of colors, and they were wondering, what is it? But if you stared at them, eventually you would be able to see an image. Well, I've given you a stereogram that you can actually look into tonight. And if you were to really stare into this image tonight, you would actually find out that this image has an image of the crucifixion of Jesus. You say, I don't see anything in it. But if you stare just right, you'll find out that somewhere, and I'll give a little bit of snapshot of it, Maybe it's like this. Here is where this image is. And I know you can't see it, but it's actually the arms of Jesus are right through here, they're right through here. And so one of these 3D images, the reality is, is that there is more to see than that meets the eye. And what I want to do tonight is, is I want to talk about us having a relationship with Jesus and what that really means. And I want you to understand that God wants you to see more then that just meets your eye. One of, the big, being, one of the characteristics of being strong is simply this. We see more than it meets the eye, and we see more than we see. And here's the big difference. Those who are really Jesus strong, they don't just have eyesight. Here's the key. They have insight. Now, now let me just give you a, big, a deeper thought. And here's the deeper thought. The deeper your insight the stronger your eyesight. And when I mean by eyesight there, I'm talking about your spiritual eyesight. Now remember, you remember Jesus, he spoke with Thomas, and when Jesus met Thomas, remember Thomas said, I won't believe that Jesus really did resurrect unless I can put my hands into his thighs, as well as into his nail-pierced hands. And Jesus appeared to none other than the disciples and to Thomas, and he said to Thomas, put your hands into my sides. And he did. And Thomas said, my Lord and my God. He said, I believe. And Jesus said to him, seeing, this was this, he said, 
He said, blessed are they who do not see and yet believe. In other words, here's the thought. It's not seeing believing, it's believing is seeing. And you've got to understand this principle, because the principle for that is actually in Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. You will see this principle very clearly in this particular, in this particular verse. Listen to what it says in Proverbs. My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding, indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Now, when you look at this passage, you actually going to see three things here. You're going to see, first of all, light. You're going to see light here when he says, my words. Notice he says, my words. Notice he says, my commands. That's light. You're also going to get from light to give you insight. Look at verse 3. He says, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding. So you've got light, you got insight. Now look at this. You then get eyesight. Notice he says, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and you will find the knowledge, or I can go on, the knowledge of God. The point of the passage is, everything that we, when we're growing in grace and knowledge of Christ and becoming Jesus strong, there's more that meets the eye when it comes to living the Christian life and when it comes to studying God's Word. You not only need to have sight, you've got to have insight, and your insight will give you true eyesight. And that's what we're going to learn as we go through the Scriptures tonight. In fact, you actually see this particular principle we just talked about right here in Luke 24, beginning of verse 28. Or should I even say verse 27? First of all, you see light. Look at verse 27. Then beginning with Moses and with all the prophets, he explained to them the things concerning himself and all the scriptures. So Jesus is giving light to the truth about himself, who's going to be cru- who's been crucified and resurrected. Notice not only does there light, notice that there's also insight. Look at verse 30. When he had reclined at the table with them, he took the bread, blessed it, and breaking it, he began giving it to them. The note. Then their eyes were opened. So you get this idea. Here's the first thing. We got sight, the scriptures. And then we got insight. He opens their eyes. And then lastly, you get eyesight. And look at this. And they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. And then verse 35 ends. They they began to relate their experiences on the road and how he was recognized by them in the breaking of the bread. They finally came to the conclusion, I can see spiritually. So we're going to go through this process tonight of looking at how we can have this ability to see more than what's really there. So hang with me. Here we go. What do we need to do, sir? First of all, we need light. Now, let me make sure that we understand. we got to shed some light on the light. I've got to get you in on about this light. Here's what I want you to recognize. Light is so important for every single one of us. But let me just say this. In the scriptures, you find several things. First of all, you find God's light. First John 1, 5. God is light, and in him there is no darkness. You find that God's word is light. Psalm 119, 105. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. God's truth is light. Isaiah 2, 5. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. Jesus is light. John 1, 9. There was a true light which coming into the world enlightens every man. And then finally, those who live by his word are light. Matthew 5, 14 says, you are the light of the world. Verse 16 says, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your Father and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So what we got to understand is that light, the question is, what is light? So we all know how a flashlight is. We know why we have flashlights. In fact, you get into a dark place, and everybody's in a dark place, and one person puts out the flashlight. Now, everybody can see something, and they'll follow the person who's got the flashlight. Light's purpose is to dispel darkness. In the Scriptures, light is dispelling the lies of the enemy and the darkness of the enemy. Light is the revelation of God's truth. 
It's shining the light on who He is, on His way. Light is this. Light is God showing me who He is. Light is showing me His way, His will, and His Word. And you've got to recognize that many people think that there are thousands of lights in the world today, but you've got to recognize God doesn't have a thousand different flashlights. He's got only one source of light, and His source of light is His Son, Jesus. You say, well, what about children of God? Sure, they've got the light, the light of Jesus. What about the Word? Well, that is the Word, but the Word of Jesus is the light of Jesus. The reality is Jesus got that, said that, and in fact, John 8, 12, He says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows Me will have the light of life and will never walk in darkness. So you've got to get down that there's only one light. It's the light of Jesus Christ. You get the Jesus light through the Word. You get the Jesus light through Jesus Himself. And you get the Jesus light through the people who are living with that light lit up in them. But let me make sure we're clear about something. Light doesn't guarantee sight. You've got to get this principle down. Light doesn't guarantee sight. See, here's the truth. You could be in light. You could be around light. You can see light. You can watch light. But that's no guarantee that you actually have the light. Because light does not guarantee sight. Let me, let me give you a perfect example of that. In the scriptures, you find out that there were two disciples that were walking on their way to Emmaus. Now listen, they are walking to Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem, on the way, seven miles from Jerusalem, walking to Emmaus, and they run into Jesus. But here's my question. Did they know it was Jesus? No. They had no clue what it was. They're walking with Jesus. They're talking with Jesus. They're listening to Jesus. They're hearing, they're hearing the word of Jesus. But get this: they're not seeing Jesus. They have no clue. And as far as they know, he's just a sharp knife in the kitchen drawer. He's got a lot of sharp things to say. But who he is, they don't know. The truth is that there was the truth that they were hearing from Jesus. But that truth of life was going in one ear and out the other. And folks, let me tell you, you and I can be just like these disciples. We hear a lot of sharp Bible teaching. We hear a lot of sharp Bible preaching. But we fail to see who's really teaching. And who the teaching really is, is Jesus. And listen, I, I love some Bible, great Bible teaching. I can get on with some good Bible teaching. I love sharp Bible preaching. For example, I love hearing David Jeremiah. Some of you love Charles Stanley. Others of you love Tony Evans. In today's times, it's people like Francis Chan that's very popular. And how about this? Clayton King. Everybody loves hearing Clayton King. But you've got to understand, they're not the lost. They're just light bearers. That's all they're doing. They're just bearing the light. And here's what you got to recognize. Just because they're bearing the light and you're hearing the light, it doesn't mean that you now have sight. You can hear them preach, 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 preach. But then you never get what they're telling you. Because you heard and saw light, but you didn't get sight. All of us have left saying things like this. Now, what a great sermon! What great preacher! I want to go hear that guy again. And we're left no different than when we came in, except feeling better about ourselves that somehow we've been around some light. And the same true for reading, the study, reading and studying the Bible. Some of you have read the Bible through multiple times. I mean, you've been through the Bible, you've been through the Bible, you've been through the Bible. Some of you can even quote the Bible. That's a wonderful thing. Some of you have been engaged in Bible studies. You never miss Sunday school. And when you've got the, what is it that Tyler's using on Sunday mornings that the you guys are using our Zoom. So when the Zoom meeting comes together and it's for the Bible purposes, you're there, you're showing up. You're showing up for your Bible study. You talk about people being exposed to the Bible. Many of the people have been exposed to the Bible. Don't we ever be so concerned about being exposed to the coronavirus or any other virus that I've ever seen in my life? But we've been greatly exposed to the Bible. We've been greatly exposed to God's light. But you've got to recognize that's no guarantee that you now have sight just because you've had light. Hey, let me tell you, King Herod in the Bible 
had that was exposed to God's light. He loved the preaching of John the Baptist, but he didn't have sight. There were all the Pharisees. They heard Jesus almost every day. They received, heard, was around, in, the light. But they never got sight. There was Judas Iscariot, one of Jesus' own twelve disciples. He was around Jesus every day. He was all around the light. But he never got sight. See, none of those people got sight just because they were in the light. So I fear, I fear that is the testimony of many people in church today. I, I fear that's the testimony of many people who are even on Facebook today. They grew up in the church, they're around the light, they're in the light, they see the light, they saw the light, they're for the light, but they never got sight. So the question is, well, how do you go from light to sight? Here's the answer. You've got to have Insight. You need to get us down. You need to write it down. God wants us to be around the light. He loves it when we're around the light. And when we're in the Bible, we're around the light. When you are reading your Bible, you're reading the light. He wants us to be in it, around it, about it. But let me tell you, it's not you just being in it that's important. It's you getting something from it that's important. It's you getting insight. That's essential to being Jesus strong. You know, remember Proverbs chapter 2, verse 3. It says this Indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and, so, and search for it as good and treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Notice, you don't find the fear of the Lord and knowledge of God just by being in the light. You've got to have insight. Not just the light. Now, here's one of the keys. Here's one of the keys to getting insight. And this is critical. If you want it, if you want insight, then you will do whatever it takes to get it. That's the principle. You see, you see here's what you get. No, just going after it hard was really characterized by these two disciples on the road to Emmaus, who, by the way, do not recognize Jesus. Remember, they had no clue who he is. But after being with the light, around the light, they want something more. What they want is insight, not just the light. And so in verse 28, the Bible says, And they approached the village where they were going, and he, Jesus, acted as though he were going farther. Isn't that interesting? Jesus acted like he was just going to march on. They made it there to a mass. Jesus is going to act, act, put on the act, and he's going to walk on further. He's going to move on out. And when he does that, they stop him, and they beg him, and they urge him, and they assist of him. Please, come, stay with us. Why? Because they want insight, not just light. So you can tell the difference between those people who just want sight and those people who want insight. So people who really want insight, I'll tell you about them. They hunger for Jesus. In fact, look at your Bible. Look at verse 29. Verse 29 says this, But they urged him, saying, Stay with us. For it's getting toward evening, and the day is now nearly over. Now, let's just be frank. They could have just been saying, well, you know, hey, Jesus, you know, thanks for the good word. We appreciate that. You've been so nice. And so we want you to come on over and just be sociable. We want you to be sociable with us. Now, let me tell you, they're not trying to be sociable with Jesus. What they're really saying is, is that not only do we find you appealing, what we find is we want what you've got, and you've got something we don't have. And they find Jesus as essential for their relationship. Here's where they are. They're hungry for Jesus. They hunger for more time with Jesus. They've been walking with Jesus for maybe seven miles. They've been hearing all about the Scriptures. He's been going all the way from Moses all the way to, to Malachi, talking about the crucifixion, talking about Him being in the Old Testament. He's showing them all this, and they're listening. They're all around the light, and they're saying, that's, that's wonderful. We want more. Come to our house. Tell us more. Tell us more. What's happening? They're hungry. 
They want more of Jesus. They're hungry for the Word of Jesus. Here's my question when I, when I think about insight. Are you hungry for more of Jesus? Or do you find yourself going, you know, well, you know, one day a week is okay. Or, you know, really one Sunday a week. I, that's good. That's all I need. And in fact, if I start doing a little bit more, people are going to think that I'm a Jesus freak. Man, I can't do that. The question is, is that are you somebody that wants insight or just sight? And if you want insight, you've got to become hungry for it. And I can tell you this, you get out of it what you put into it. First Peter chapter 2, verse 2 says this, As newborn babies crave the pure milk of the Word so that you may grow in respect to your salvation. Crave it. You've got to have an appetite that you hunger for this insight need in your life. You're not content with just getting sight. You know you need something more. And if you're listening to this message, you know in your heart, in the depths of your heart, you need much more of this type of teaching. One day with Jesus is not enough. One hour with Jesus is not enough. If you want insight, oh, listen, okay. But Jesus won't sight. See, that's the problem. Many people just won't sight, and they're content with that. And they're missing out on the blessings because God wants to not just give them sight, He wants to give them insight. Because when He gives them the insight, they get eyesight. So people who won't sight, remember, they are they hunger for Jesus. But secondly, they also go deeper with Jesus. All right, now listen to this. Watch this. These disciples who have yet to recognize who Jesus is, they don't have a clue. They're begging him, come with us, Jesus. Come, stay with us. Tell us more. We want insight. We want insight. And then the Bible says this, they get to the house, and when Jesus goes into the house, they sit around at the table, and they have a meal together. Interestingly, Jesus plays like the host. He basically takes over the meal. And the Bible says, when he had reclined at the table with him, he took the bread and blessed it and breaking it, he began giving it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Listen, the disciples, they were with Jesus before they recognized him. Think of it. I, I, when Jesus is breaking the bread, why is it that just breaking of the bread all of a sudden? Why is that the means whereby their eyes are open and they recognize Jesus? Why? Is the answer. See, they remember watching Jesus feed the 5,000. They remember him praying over the bread, and they remember him breaking the bread and keep breaking the bread, and not just feeding the 5,000, but the 15,000 who were really present that day. They even probably heard the story about Jesus, who was instituting the Lord's Supper there in the upper room with the 12 disciples. They heard that story. They knew about Jesus was the one breaking that bread. But get this, all of a sudden, when Jesus is breaking that bread here in Emmaus, the light comes on. Here's the question, what happened? Here's what happened. They saw something deeper than what was there. They saw more than what, their, what was meeting their eye. They saw more truth in his breaking of the bread that they had ever seen in their life. Because instead of seeing this Jesus breaking bread, here's what they saw. They saw Jesus giving them what they really needed. And here's what they needed. It's not physical bread that you need. It's me you need. It's spiritual bread that you need. And that is that when he broke the bread, they realized that what he's really saying is this, I'm the bread of life. I am the one who sustains you. I am the one who's the source of your life. I'm the sustenance of your life. It's not physical bread that you need. It's spiritual bread that you need. And their lives were all of a sudden realizing that right before their eyes was the one who is the source of all life, the bread of life. What's the lesson? What's the lesson? Here's the lesson. When the spiritual, here it is, I'll put it on the screen. When the spiritual lesson leaps off the page more than the literal lesson, 
God has given you insight into His ways and His will. Listen to me carefully. God doesn't want you just to read the Bible literally. He wants you to read the Bible spiritually. So that what you look at on the page are not just words in black and white. What you look and see is something deeper. Just like we talked about the crucifix of Jesus. You couldn't see it, but if you were been looking for it, you would see it. More than meets the eye. And let me just tell you, to be able to see that image, you've got to stare at it. You, got, in fact, you actually have to almost cross your eyes to be able to see it. You see that almost like a hologram inside that image. And what I'm here to tell you is this. If you want insight, you got to stare into God's words like you do into that picture. you got to have the effort, the work. you got to have the study. you got to be willing to get, do whatever it takes to get out of it what it wants to give you. And I'm here to tell you, what you put into it is what you get out of it. So here's what I want you to realize. I, I grew up in the Baptist home. But in North Carolina, I grew up for years. All I got was sight. But not until I got under the true teaching of God's Word through a man at Mount Vernon Baptist Church and through some great study of that Word did I start getting insight, not just sight. And I'm here to help you understand that until you move from being a person wanting sight to a person wanting insight, you'll never be Jesus strong. You won't. Not going to happen. So listen to me carefully. Good news. If you will get to the light, get around the light, be in the light, be a part of the light, and then get some insight, you will have outside. In fact, look at the Bible. 31, verse 31. Here it is. Then their eyes were opened, look, and they recognized him. Now, this is the part that's really going to be stunning to you. Here's what it says. And he vanished from their sight. I mean, the very moment they now recognize Jesus, it's Jesus! He's alive! He's gone. In that split second, he's gone. And then verse 35 says, they began to relate their experiences on the road and how he was recognized by them in the breaking of the bread. Now, note him, Jesus, literally, he vanished. He vanished. That says something, by the way, says something about his resurrected body. That is, he could physically resurrect, and yet his body could literally vanish. So here's the real question. Why in the world did Jesus vanish? Well, let me tell you why. He vanished because the disciples didn't need physical eyes to believe anymore. Because now they had spiritual eyes to believe forever more. He vanished because God had given them insight, but not just insight, He's given them eyesight, where they now see, not with their physical eyes, they see with their heart. Don't you remember what Jesus told Thomas? He says, because you have seen me, you believe? He says, blessed are those who do not see, and yet believe. you got to know this. Here's the principle. What you put into Jesus and what these disciples, what they put into Jesus, what you put into Jesus is what you will get out from Jesus. And that is ultimately where God's trying to take every single one of us. He doesn't want us just to see physically. He wants us to see spiritually. How do you do that? In closing, how do you do that? Very simple. You do your part. What's my part? Your part's really easy, but it's called W O R K. That thing we don't like to do. No work. You gotta put your heart into it. You gotta put your soul into it. You gotta get hungry for God, and you gotta want to go deeper with God. And you're not content with just the surface understanding of Jesus. You want the depths of the teaching. You don't want to be hanging out on the shore. You don't want to be just putting your feet barely into the waters. You want to go out and get in the deep. That's your part. And here's the cool thing. You do your part. God does the miracle and does his part. And what's his part? 
and gives you insight. And then, together with light, with light, sight, and insight, or let's just say it, light, insight, you get eyesight. God does his part by opening your eyes. So tonight, I want to ask you, has God opened your eyes? Years ago, I grew up on a song, you probably heard it, it says, open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. To reach out and touch Him and say that we love Him. Open our ears, Lord, and help us to listen. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. You want to see Jesus? Or are you just content? Just content. Just have some sight, but no insight. And therefore, you have no true eyesight. You don't see from your heart. I invite you tonight to get some insight so you'll have eyesight. So, won't you join me as we close with this wonderful song led by our